guest on the show. It is the one and only North American pro player, formerly member of the Space Station Gaming RLCS roster, Sathu. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Pretty good. Just been enjoying my afternoon, getting ready for the show and trying to come up with all the questions and figure out the, the best way to kind of present uh, the past year that you've had so far for uh, Rocket League Esports. So mm -hmm. we're going to start off from the very beginning, not of your entire Rocket League career <laughs> or your entire career as a, a professional player, because you've been all across the scene for a while, just yeah. not in the, the rival or RLCS. But we are going to start at how you guys qualified for the rival series. Uh, the first time that we ever really saw you was during an Astro tournament that you took first. So... Mm -hmm. Where what was really the big steps you had to take from qualifying, like from winning that Astro tournament to qualifying for the Rival series? Yeah, so winning that, like moving from Astro to RLRS, isn't too much of a jump. You know, we actually face a lot of RLCS teams usually in those, or at least like like brink between RLRS and RLCS. So we kind of just had to like kind of carry that momentum into qualifiers and kind of just tighten up uh, a lot of our defensive issues at the time because that was kind of what we were lacking we were like an offensive powerhouse uh right before rival series but we didn't really have the defense so we had to fix that um so you could once... say that south america kind of has to take a little bit of a page out of your own yes. book if they want to improve okay a hundred percent a hundred percent gotcha yeah. so you qualified for the rival series and then after you got to that stage of play where you're playing with people that are at the same level as you are how was it, was it more difficult than what you imagined to try and get into the top two? Or was it just smooth sailing all the way, continuing that momentum from the qualification? I mean, for the most part, it was smooth sailing. You know, we started off our first three series with sweeps. And then we go into the fourth against this, this crazy team called the Peeps, uh, which at the <laughs> time was Gyro, Pirates, and Arsenal. Yeah, And uh, they swept us and we kind of just had to like recollect ourselves and we went on to win the rest of our series, and um, so for the most part, it was pretty smooth sailing. Although the rival series, like, it is a jungle in there. It is hard to get out. It's hard to get in, and it's hard to get out. Um, it's it's just constant top top level competition, and you never know what's going to happen each week. Oh yeah, even for qualifying, like the peeps who gave you guys <sighs> trouble during that series almost didn't qualify. They That's only right. won by one game against the dudes who yep. also struggled to get there. They even lost the compadres before yep. they were supposed to face you in those That's qualifiers. Right. So it, yeah. it's insane to see how much like a single game really matters. Great to see that you guys perform so well. Uh, if you haven't seen the results for that and you've just been under a rock, this is how well Bread did. One of two teams who went six and one. Unfortunately, they didn't get the one extra or two extra points. I guess you'd need to get yeah. first place. But you guys didn't really need it. Let's talk about the uh, way you guys qualified for the RLCS. You beat Rogue, and you had an insane run through that promotion tournament. What was were there more nerves than normal compared to the matches you had in the rival series? Oh, a hundred percent. It's like the promo tourney and. I think a lot of people could back me up on this. It's probably the most nerve-wracking tournament in the game. Um, even compared to regionals, the the promo tourney is just like... I mean, you're playing... You're deciding where you're going to be for the next couple months. So, like, yeah. it, it's 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 crazy. And, you know, there's careers on the line. There's new careers ready to be made. Uh, and that was the case for us. And that was kind of the driving factor because we had more to play for, I think. Uh, the teams getting demoted or on the verge of demotion were just like, they're kind of in a slump and we were on the rise. So, yeah. So do you kind of appreciate the system that's in place to help people qualify for the RLCS? Or would you rather just have like a sort of auto-promotion or relegation system instead? That's a great question. In my opinion, there should be one spot for auto-promotion, auto-relegation with eight teams currently. Uh, if it were move to like 10 or 12 teams and i'd say maybe two spots but one auto promotion i think would be great and then the other could be a playoff spot and that's it gotcha so yeah. would it just be like a playoff spot with just the second place team or like the second to fourth teams because i've seen some of those uh, things tossed around throughout the community I'd say just second place gotcha yeah. okay yeah. just make it easy one match that you have to do best of seven and then you know That'll be all you really need to prove. You don't need to play all the other crazy teams that are competing in that. But great to see that you guys qualified, yeah. beat out yeah. that former Rogue ro roster. And yep. you continued the uh, 
awesome performances you guys were having up to those DreamHack Leipzig qualifiers? Mm-hmm. Was that just giving you guys more of an ego boost after taking <laughs> down some of the teams you'll be facing in the RLCS season? Yeah, I mean, by that time, we'd already been scrimming a lot of the RLCS teams, so we kind of already knew where we stood by then. Um, gotcha. You know, going into our first land, we weren't, our expectations weren't too high. Um, we obviously want to make day two. That was pretty much like our first goal. And so we just went in and, you know, did phenomenally. I mean, we beat uh, a pickup German team, but then we beat PSG right after. And we, um, you know, it was off stream, but the people that were there saw we actually just dominated them. Uh, oh, yeah. Was, you got 3 0 against them and then 3 1 PSG after yeah, that. And PSG, yeah. a lot of people, even before the most recent season of RLCS, were saying that they were a great team. They've been saying yeah. PSG has been pretty good for a while. Now we're They're finally consistent. starting to see it. Yeah. But uh, the, that Group D was pretty insane as well. We saw Dignitas, Triple Trouble, Mouse mm-hmm. in there as well. I mean, even Team Echo Zulu, they were very dangerous in that situation too. That's right. Yeah. And then. Um, what actually happened on uh, day two? You guys faced off against Vitality. Yeah. And w- were there just a lot of nerves going into day two, especially facing off against a team of that caliber? Or No, we we went in like as a, like incredibly aggressive, actually. We were just like, you know, we were up two to one in the series at one point, and we were just like basically yelling how much faster we were at the time, and just we were like convincing ourselves like we should win this. Uh, then we lost game four, and then game five they scored with a second left uh, to Oops. make it one zero, and then win the series. So yeah, it was rough, but yeah, <laughs> we were pretty proud of the performance. Still, uh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you still beat Evil Geniuses again. You did that in the qualifiers, then That's you right. did it here. Uh, yeah. EG obviously not having the uh, greatest season there. But speaking yeah. of the uh, most recent season, before that even occurred, you guys got signed by Space Station. How did it feel to? Qualify for the so you qualified for the rival series after winning a national tournament, which national tournaments are pretty nice, but rival series is a lot better than that. Get yeah. top two, then you get all the way, win the promotion tournament, qualify for Leipzig, make it to day two with a pretty decent performance, and then Space Station signs you. Like, was yeah. this just the climax of the story so far for your guys' roster? I mean, yeah, we were we felt like we were kind of like on top of the world. I mean getting like an actual salary now and kind of like the support of an org. We didn't have a decal, but you know, we, we still had the banner to play under and we were incredibly excited. And, um, but we, we knew we still had like, this was just the beginning. Like we had, you know, some expectations from Leipzig now that we had done pretty decently and yeah, we had to go in and like actually prove our worth in the RLCS. Yeah, and we even saw that worth proved throughout the RLCS season. It was very nail biter for a yeah. lot of the teams that we saw there, especially because yeah. so many people didn't know who was going to be really that seventh team. A, a lot of people kind of knew that uh, Splice wasn't really doing the greatest there, but mm-hmm. two to five for EG, two to five for Rogue, and then like you and Ghost, pretty neck and neck, yes. and even Cloud Nine weren't really doing the greatest that season. Nope. Yeah. It was it was definitely a crazy season in terms of results. Cloud9 had their usual upset from us. And, uh, you know, G2 and NRG still held it down like they should. And like you said, EG kind of surprised a lot of people with how poor they actually performed and how they couldn't uh, kind of just, like, actually do anything, really. They, uh, they beat Splice and Rogue in the first week. And so they didn't really show much, at least not their potential that they're supposed to be showing. Yeah, and it's still great that uh, you guys were able to make it all the way out of the bottom two. A lot of people expected some of these teams that qualified from the rival series just to go straight back down, as we unfortunately saw happen for Splice there. But uh, how was it just in general having the social media team of Space Station behind you guys during that season? Like We're seeing a video here from when you guys... (laughs) joined uh were acquired by space station and then there's been some insane stuff showing off the highlights of your place that really just helped boost your confidence yeah i mean it was it was nice because we had like like i said this banner to play under and like this whole new group of people like everyone in the org like supporting us because we had players from their other teams we had lots of their staff members just kind of watching our games because everyone loved rocket league they loved watching and they like in the space station discord, they were always like rooting us on and stuff. So it was definitely a big confidence boost. Awesome. So you guys 
got sponsored by Space Station, make it to the top four. And then it seems like things just have not been the greatest since that moment. Yeah. We're talking about the uh, the regional championships for North America. You guys were playing Cloud9 the first round, got 4-0'd, and then Rogue 4-0'd as well. A lot of people surprised by Rogue's performance in that in general. But talk to me about how you felt your team performed then compared to the previous results you've had. Yeah, I mean... We obviously didn't perform very well, uh, as shown by the results, and uh, we were kind of just a little more hesitant. Um, we kind of lost our our flair and our style because um, we had a pretty set style by then. But uh, you know, we started we started working with a coach like around week four, and uh, looking back, that probably wasn't the best idea. We probably should just kept everything the same, just straight into regionals because uh, you know we were kind of confident with our play uh, before that. Um, so that was that might have just been a little mistake, um, but I mean, it's also up to the players, and we just yeah. didn't perform. That's that's the that's like the final part to it. That's the conclusion. Gotcha. So just weren't really playing your game as you normally did. Maybe yep. there might have been some doubt or something going on, and then as yep. soon as you drop that game, then Rogue already. We saw it happen with you guys against the uh, former Rogue roster during the qualifying uh, matches for getting into the RLCS. It might have just been that they were more geared to get the victories and yeah. actually qualify for that. So yeah. we saw that you guys weren't able to qualify for uh, the land that happened recently in Newark. Did mm-hmm. that put a damper on your progress as a team, do you feel? Um. To a degree. I mean, in the end, our expectations at the beginning of the season were just to get top six. Um, the top four finish during regular season league play was, like, phenomenal. And we had already... We, we were really excited about that. And making land would have just been, like, the cherry on top. But it wasn't, like, too much of a damper. Um, we kind of, we kind of like, brushed it off after a little. Um, and just said, like, let's keep working towards the next event. Gotcha. So speaking of the next event that you guys participated in, uh, we're going to be talking about DreamHack Dallas and okay. what kind of went down there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people, after seeing you guys get top four, mm-hmm. go into uh, Dallas. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys did qualify for that or did the, did the team? Yeah, you guys qualified yeah. for that through the closed qualifiers, uh, got your flights and everything paid. And that's the second time in a row for DreamHack Pro Circuit that you guys made it through that. Mm-hmm. Um, going into the event before anything even happens, were there any specific issues going on with the team or was it just business as usual? I mean, it was, we didn't really have many issues. Grimm's had ever since regionals been kind of mediocre. Um, like right before regionals and after regionals, Grimm's were just, eh, we, we weren't really like, we weren't on our stride like we were during the season. So, yeah, I mean, we had issues with that, but like outside of the the game, no, not really. Um, so it might just fun. be like a slump that was going on during the yeah. time. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So once you get to the event, mm-hmm. day one, get all the way up to the match against Method. Okay. What went wrong during that series for you? Um, I mean, we came up against a squad that we didn't really know how to play. They kind of just. You know, Rix and Burrito had, they were kind of like supporting Astral uh, incredibly, yeah. actually. They just kept demoing <laughs> us, and Astral was absolutely insane. He was doing things I haven't even seen before. Um, and he was just 1v3ing us, essentially. We, uh, you know, we were, we were up by two goals with about a minute left in game four, so we were about to push it to game five, and then we blew the lead and lost in overtime. And so that was it. Gotcha. So mainly the outstanding performance from the opposing team and astral recently getting picked up by dignitas playing yeah. with them for a uh, foreseeable future so obviously yeah. no fluke there from the way that their roster perform and the other guys on method they've been pretty consistent in that region mm-hmm. did anything really change in the mentality of the team itself after that loss to method after that loss to method yeah um i mean to be honest, it was kind of too quick to tell because, like, that was the first day, and then we flew back on the, like, the day after the third day, after Championship gotcha. Sunday, and then two days later was when the, the release happened, so 
yeah there wasn't even enough time <laughs> to tell if like you know the mentality had changed or not so yeah so were you just completely blindsided by this release like looking at the the tweet that you uh tweeted out uh june 5th almost uh two months at this point since it's happened but they just approached you out of the blue said we're just going to be looking at different options were they trying out other people beforehand or was it more just like them not agreeing with how things have been going recently um they hadn't been trying out people beforehand to my knowledge um gotcha. they just yeah they just like invited me to a discord call and uh both players and the coach were there and they just kind of explained to me that they felt like they need a new player um so yeah i, I was definitely a little caught off guard just because like how the season had just gone and i felt yeah. like there were other things to change before a player needed to be changed. Um, and also, I felt like I brought uh, a couple different things to the team that were important. And so I didn't feel like uh, a kick was like necessary yet. And I thought it was a little um, impulsive. Yeah. But yeah, that's how it went down. So speaking of those things that you said could have been changed before having a player get released and looking for another third, what are some of those things that you would have improved as a part of the roster? Yeah, so as a roster, I think we could have kind of explored our like how we played before, like towards the beginning of the season, um, and kind of just try to rebuild what we were doing then and move on from there. Because it again, it felt like we had kind of lost our our touch since then, and something was off with how we were trying to play the game. And I don't think we were all on the same page exactly. Do you feel the way that the not really the the way that RLCS is structured, but the way that the off seasons have been typically going and how Rocket League has evolved has forced people to more likely go for those roster changes rather than sticking with their regular team and trying to improve things. I mean, normally I would say yes, except the teams that have stuck it out are, seem to be performing a bit better. And uh, like you know, you have PSG, like we, we like we said yeah. earlier, um, <laughs> Cloud Nine. Uh, have consistently been doing well. G2 stagnated uh, in their world championship performances for a while, so you could kind of see a change coming. Um, that one probably should have just been handled better, like, yeah. like behind the scenes and stuff. Um, so I could... I mean, you can kind of see why teams make changes, because there's such a short amount of time in the off season and the seasons are so quick. Yeah. And that kind of begs for like a, a quick solution rather than a possibly a better solution but that's longer term so yeah, yeah especially since we see some of these teams that have been around for a bit like evil geniuses mm -hmm. losing like just doing poorly one season and then they're basically out of the running for rival for rlcs and then not even yeah. in the rival series anymore yeah what we saw happen there yeah uh now going on to recent events that have happened mm -hmm. with after your release from uh, space station um Going to join or being a part of Afterthought for the Montreal Qualifiers, how did that all come to be? Did Chuck just approach you, or was it just like things just worked out well for everyone? Or Yeah, so during this time, uh, I was still exploring a couple like vacant spots in the RLCS, but Shock was like, hey, like we should like do this qualifier. And at the time, the, the RLCS teams decided to try different thirds for the qualifier. So I said that was fine, and... Uh, we we had a couple options to try out, and we decided to go with first killer because we were just trying to qualify. We weren't trying yeah. to like we we weren't a uh, like guaranteed duo for RLRS, and we still aren't technically. Um, so we we just wanted to win and qualify. So first killer was our best option at the at the time, and obviously it worked out. Awesome. So you guys qualified with first killer. Looking at the uh, the bracket that you had to go through to get to that point. Does, did this remind you of the runs that you made with Space Station during DreamHack Leipzig to qualify for that? Uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely did, except it was a bit um, easier this time around just because there was no NRG this time. There was no Cloud9. True. <laughs> um, we kind of just had to... We went through an RLRS team and two RLCS teams, and Rogue typically doesn't do as well in these qualifiers, so... It was almost like we just had to go. We just pretty much had to make it past Space Station after we got past RBG initially. Were there any thing that you were worried about during the match against Space Station, or 
was it just you knew them so well that this is no problem <laughs> um before the series i i t- i pulled first and shock together and i was just like look i know there's a couple things that we can actually do to to hard counter uh some of their their tendencies and so we we did those and it, and it worked perfectly um there there were never really any worries because again this was just like a pickup team that we made the week before uh gotcha like we just kind of needed to play so speaking on to that that pickup team that you've been playing with, uh, you played with First Killer during those Astro 2v2s. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in the future, do you feel like he'd be a good teammate for you? Or is it just like a, a moment that, you know, we're just going to casually play these tournaments and then see how well we do, maybe win some money at, while we're at it, especially a, an Astro tournament at that? I mean, in the future, he would definitely be a great teammate. But it's like... I, I kind of need to do things for myself now and like try to get back into RLRS or RLCS. Um, and it's it's hard to kind of like put him in my plans if I make RLCS with a team. I can't just kick anyone in the, the first season there. So maybe in like the long term, maybe maybe in a while, but like soon, not really, just because the timing's all off. So speaking of timing and how short the off season is. Mm-hmm. Have you been able to make any leeway with trying to find a team in ROCS Rival Series or even a, a team to try and re-qualify for the Rival Series so far apart from Afterthought? Because he said earlier that you still aren't solidified on uh, Shock and you being a duo for those qualifiers. Yeah, so in, in not being solidified for a duo, uh, that's just me trying out with shock and then me trying out with a couple other players that are trying to get into the rlrs the rlcs i'm pretty sure is like pretty much taken up and yeah uh rlrs is too or for the most part there might be like one spot open but nothing that i'm trying right now gotcha so you're mainly looking forward towards requalifying for the rival series um any players that you might not have been trying out with but are really ones to look out for during those qualifiers for the rival series that you might be worried about facing off against? Um, there's that squad Boulevard or Frontline. I don't know what they Yeah, they I think it's by. Frontline. But it's like Alraz and Andy and I think they played with J-Pow in the, in the um, summer tournament, but I think it was, I think their normal third is like Brendan. They're definitely a squad to watch out for because they've been just playing, they've been grinding the game together for a while, it seems, because I've seen them ranked all the time. Um, whatever team, like, like linked up, like Sosa Joe and Skills, they're definitely a team to watch out for. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good squad and Noble as well. Um, Alpha Caps gotcha. team, they're they're all squads to watch out for. Do you feel like it's going to be easier this season, especially since there's more spots open? I think so. I think this will actually be one of the easier seasons to qualify. Yeah. Gotcha. So you got all the way from being a part of a very old Hollywood Hammers roster, if anyone (laughs) remembers that organization. That's right. (laughs) Uh, Forming bread with AXB and Civical, qualifying for the Rival Series, uh, qualifying for LCS, being picked up by an org, and then released from an org. What are your your plans, say, for whatever reason, you guys don't qualify for the Rival Series? Mm. Um, Well, to be honest with you, I'm treating this kind of like how I treated bread. It was kind of like a last shot type of thing. Like, if I don't make it, I'm done. To be honest, I'm not even guaranteeing myself to to play in these qualifiers because there still is that, like, that pull from, like, school and, like, other stuff I could do with my statistics career. So there's always that to think about. And I'm more than likely leaning to, to playing, but there's no guarantee. Gotcha. So if things don't work out this season, you might just try next time, not really worry too much about it. Um, yeah. During the off season, while not being a part of uh, an RLCS or Rival Series roster, is it very difficult to get those kind of scrims and experience against the top teams? It's 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 like a horrible feeling because like you kind of have it all for a second, and then it's just all gone. Like pay scrims, uh, being able to like kind of just play with the same guys every day because now you're having to do tryouts all the time uh it's definitely a rough feeling and uh yeah it, it, it's tough it's very difficult for sure so how do you keep yourself motivated to keep going and keep driving towards requalifying for the rival series i mean some parts are like 
I kind of want to prove my worth again. Uh, other parts, you know, there's kind of that feeling of revenge I want. Um, and kind of proving some more people wrong. Because uh, we kind of did that originally with bread. But now it's like, if I made it back, that would really prove a lot of people wrong. Yeah, got to do it all over again. You already <laughs> proved a lot of people by qualifying for uh, DreamHack Montreal. Any mm -hmm. specific plans for when it comes to training and getting ready for that tournament is that just going to be preparing you for the rival series qualifiers um not so much since we have to play with first killer and i'm not guaranteed to team with shock so True. we'll see and i i would assume like a roster deadline would be by then maybe i to be honest i still don't know um so like by then we'll know if i even like have decided to play in qualifiers or kind of like hang it up or something we'll see uh but Nah, it, it won't be for qualifiers. This is just going to be like a just for that event, and that's it. Gotcha. J just to like go to it, experience the DreamHack Montreal. I mean, you qualified yeah. for three out of four of the events so far. So that's right. You guys have been doing so well consistently getting in it to these events, and they're, they're majors at that. A lot of people competing to try and get there. Um, anything you really want to say to people who might be doubting you in this moment? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm not gonna be like too like uh, big headed with it, but yeah, I mean just you know, doing my best. <laughs> I get you. I mean that that's all we could ask for. Um, anything you want to say to the fans at home that might be cheering you on to try and requalify? Yeah, I mean I appreciate all the all the love from those who have been supporting me in my career, and you know those that sent me like messages of like sympathy following the release and just like continue to encourage me every day. Uh, I hear all of you. I look at Twitter a lot and I see all those messages and I see all those like Twitter ads. Um, and I appreciate y'all and thank you for supporting me no matter the decision I make. Awesome. Now, do you want to uh, plug your social medias before we wrap up this quick interview? Yeah, sure. Uh, my Twitch is just uh, twitch.tv slash Sathu. Um, and my Twitter is at Sathu RL. So yeah. Awesome. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. It's been great to talk to you about the history of your past year of play in professional Rocket League. Really hope the best for you for qualifying for the uh, Rival Series and also hope that you guys do really well, uh, shockingly you. well, during DreamHack <laughs> Montreal. I had to make one of those jokes at some point, but uh, it's been great oh, wow. having you on and uh, really appreciate you being a part of the show as always. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Take care. Thanks for being on. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to that first segment. the best for him to qualify for the rival series this next go around and find a team to compete with obviously you've been doing a lot of great work this past season but we do have to get in it to the next part of the show it was great to talk to him about all the juicy bits and details but now we have so many juicy bits about what's been going on during this past week of off-season mayhem, uh, we have the RL Esports update, FC Barcelona. They had a lot of stuff happening. Coming up first, we have them saying goodbye to Roken, their former coach. I believe he might have done some managing as well for them. Uh, it, it is interesting to see them give up, or not maybe give up, him move on to something else. I believe he's doing some esports consulting now instead. But this was kind of at the fallout of what we saw a lot of stuff going on with this team. We saw Alpha 54 leave the team. And then now we see Barcelona welcoming Ronicky from the entire Triple Trouble situation that was going on there. It's finally official that he joined the team. Uh, we saw some pictures of him. Uh, you can check their Twitter out. Uh, FC Barcel FCB Esports. And uh, they have some great pictures at the, the stadium with him there. So I'm sure he's very excited to be a part of that. Another awesome person, a part of the community that's excited to be a member of FC Barcelona Esports is El General. He got recently welcomed to them as a part of the coaching staff there. He's been doing amazing work in the South American scene, helping run Rocket Street, who are the main uh, organizers that have been helping out the RLCS uh, Grand Series and all the other stuff that's going on there. And then finally, to close out a lot of the news that's been going on for Barcelona, they did say goodbye to Bay Mateos, 
or you can just say by Mateos because that's really what happened there. Uh, th- it, there's no good messages to say, but it, it, it's unfortunate to see the sub leave the team, but maybe he's going to be trying to join a different roster as an actual mainstay. He does uh, leave Barcelona. That actually came out today. But uh, we do have TSM finally announcing that they signed Alpha 54, the player who recently left Barcelona. And uh, he'll be looking to perform quite well with that roster. I Knight, unfortunately, not able to retain that spot with the team or a spot in the RLCS as far as we know, or even rival series. So a lot of great players going to be trying to qualify this next season of the rival series in Europe. So definitely look out for that. Uh, some teams to look out for with a new player is Birds and the Bees in the RLCS. They round out their roster with Ajax as he joins them. Uh, recently played with Mist on Manhattan way back in the day for the Rival Series qualifiers. Didn't really do too well there, but uh, now he's taking his spot instead and playing with Roll Diz, who he played on that roster too. And with Hawks are pretty great. They did quite well for themselves uh, during the Summer Open. We'll see the results from that a bit later on. Now we need to move over to another departure that we have. This time from the South American scene, it is Maddox leaving INTZ. Very unfortunate for that to happen, but he wants to thank them for the opportunity that he has been given and uh, a lot of great times that have been had for him as a member of that team. Hopefully, he'll be able to find a new roster and qualify for the next series of uh, South American League play for that. But great to see that he was able to make a smooth departure from them and then hopefully hoping for the best in the future. Haven't seen any news yet on to where he's going quite yet. Another great news, though, from South America is that Loki Esports decided to resign, not re- not resign, resign, excuse me, their roster, and they're going to be bringing them on. We don't know exactly the length of the contract, but we have this awesome highlight clip that they put out recently just saying we're resigning them. We're doubling down on the Rocket League community for South America, and it's great because this roster has so much potential, and so does the scene as a whole. So it's always good when more orgs try to be a part of uh, Rocket League Esports as a whole. It's great to see that uh, support from them. Um, Fortunately, as we see happening in OCE, there's been some weird and wonky stuff going on there. Uh, Shady retires from competitive play. He is no longer a part of the Chiefs Esports roster as he'll be hanging up the controller or keyboard, whatever he prefers to use. And no longer driving the Octane down man field as he will not be playing in competitive play in a while. We'll see who joins. No one really knows where Drip is going, so maybe he'll just be finding his way back across the pond. All Well, I guess across the entire ocean <laughs> to uh, Australia and maybe rejoining the Chiefs. That'd be an interesting roster move there. Uh, speaking of interesting roster moves, we do have this clip from Yummy Chiefs Man. I'm Zen joining Ground Zero. Let's listen to it real quick. Yeah, so what do you want me to say about us? Well, there's a question mark next to Zen. Can you answer um, that question mark? Is Zen definitely on ground zero? Uh, Zen is definitely on ground zero, yes. Yes! I can I can stop all the normies from saying that we're playing with Jake. Oh, no. Um, yeah. So we're Jake not instead that. of Zen or Jake? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so you can put that on... It's pretty great to see that he's finally able to confirm that he is playing on a ground zero. He's going to be making sure that roster does quite well coming into the next season of league play for OCE as they've been shuffling around players left and right. I think it was Siki actually leaving that roster recently as we saw the news from that. Uh, more news about DreamHack Montreal. We do see uh, Tigre, who was a part of Mouse Sports. Still says he's a part of it, but he is playing with these two players that a lot of people know from the European region, Ocelon and Extra, for the actual event. They did sign up, so they're going to be going over there. Don't know if it's going to be under the Mouse Sports uh, name or if they, they're just going to be showing up as uh, their own pickup team. Great to see more international teams attending this, as we saw last week. One and E Esports announced that they would have an Asian team joining, so we'll see what happens there. Speaking of more European roster stuff, this is the final one that we have for today, unless it's been some news that I missed. Let me check the Twitter real quick. Now we don't really need to do that <laughs> too much, but Niels Cook, he is looking for team. He is officially off the roster of Veloce. If you check his bio, it says LFT multiple times. So 
we now know that Casio is confirmed for that roster. Don't know exactly if they are promoting. We don't know the 100% details on that as this has never occurred during the RLCS seasons so far. But he'll hopefully be trying to requalify uh, for the Rivals series with this new team. But that about wraps up the RL Esports update. Let's move on to the off-season specials now. Uh, not as much stuff going on here. Most of the news that's been this past week has been those roster changes. And that's also why we wanted to bring on Sathy to the show, just to get a little bit more entertainment for you all to enjoy. Uh, we do have the ESL Masters España Season 6 League play still going on. Week 3 matches have concluded, and Barcelona... They are actually able to get victories this time. Uh, not going to get too owed too easily. They take the victory there with ease. 6-2, to 2-0. Two, two to zero. And then the other teams, they're still doing decently. ARG, though, two victories in a row, only dropping one game in both of them. These are best of threes, so not too much you can really tell from those. Best of fives are usually the best, but... You know, this is still great to see this consistency, and they're able to pump out so many of these seasons. The next week's matches will actually be August 29th, so a lot of a bit a long break for them to enjoy and maybe re-strategize for some of those other teams. Barcelona most likely just going to continue to improve, especially with their new roster. Um, some more events that have been going on or about to go on is the Beyond Entertainment uh, astronaut results. We saw. NRG competing this one with Turbo Pulsa, and they did quite well for themselves. We don't see the final bracket here, but we do know that they were able to get a 4-0 victory against Ghost Gaming. And that's not very surprising, especially with Turbo Pulsa joining that team. Very consistent results from them, not dropping a game in, I don't think, any of those matches that you see on the screen. Just destroyed Cleveland, RBG, the peeps, and uh, destroyed Ghost as well. So, great performance from them. And we'll hopefully see more of that, and we will see more of them at Beyond the Summit, but we will also see a different team, fortunately because of the abandonment of Triple Trouble. We do have the final teams that have been announced. It is going to be Dignitas replacing them with Astral, uh, Yukio, and um, Violent Panda, uh, Yukio, I mean. And uh, we'll, we'll see how they perform in the spot of Triple Trouble. Obviously, uh, Astral, the new pickup, we heard from Sathu a bit earlier that Astral is insane, and he was able to do a lot of stuff they did not expect. So we'll see how well he's able to perform at, I think it's it's not going to be his first major event because they were at uh, DreamHack Valencia, but it'll be another great one. Speaking of the event being great, we do have the schedule of Beyond the Summit. It's pretty awesome to see that all the games are going to be best of sevens. Yes, love the format that they're having. They're also having crew battles. And if you look at the bottom of the first two days, Mafia is going to be quite amazing. Those of you who do not know what Mafia the game is, uh, let me do a quick Google search real quick as you are missing out. It's just a basically a game where there's like detectives, Mafia members, and you pretty much improv on to not getting caught the mafia members have to eliminate the other members it's just a great communal game and seeing all these personalities in the rocket league scene taking part in that as we haven't really seen anything like that since gold rush gonna be a great time all around with all those involved especially all the teams that we see participating in that uh, we also see a lot of the rocket league community members moving on to community contributions gonna be a little bit of a short show today just because of how little news there has been apart from those roster changes. We do have the witty humans from the community attempt the talk show. They are trying to break the world record for the longest talk show ever streamed. And that is going to be for 151 hours that they're trying to get by beating it by 30 minutes. Currently they're at, I think 60 hours at this point. Uh, after I took that screenshot, they're doing a lot of stuff, talking to community members and in Rocket League scene, we saw, uh, I believe, Tadpole, Ronaki. Uh, we also saw Base and a lot of others. I think Jorah was on recently. There's just been a lot of great conversation going on there. Definitely support them as they are trying to support Gamers for Giving. A great organization all around that helps uh, give games, uh, these game stations to uh, kids in need in hospitals. It's just great, great charity effort. And they're using Tiltify, which is very verifiable. But uh, some more results that have been verified recently. Rival Esports Summer Open, which led to the Birds and the Bees roster announcement. Uh, we see how dominant Birds and the Bees were, 
except against Space Station. Uh, 4-1 against RBG, who defeated Energy Esports, giving them their first loss online in, I think, almost a year, at least since 2018. Great to see that from RBG as they've been trying out different rosters there. But Birds of the Bees are the main story here as they dominated their or RLCS, not Rival Series, former Rival Series counterparts in the Peeps, 4-1, to one, beat RBG as well. Uh, the Peeps still looking pretty decent. Ghost, we do not know what is going on with their third and what's going to happen there. So still waiting for that announcement as the roster lock, I believe, is next week at some point. Or I think on the 18th, not entirely sure the exact date for that. But uh, we do see some more news coming out about the brawl that has been happening. A lot of people have been loving it. Sathya, I was talking to a little bit before. He's been enjoying a lot. Great experience all around. The first 12 players for the European one that is going on this week have been released. We see Fairy Peak, Flakes, Ronicky, uh, Tigre, a lot, Cassio, Flame, Fair, Speed, Bluey, Turbo, and Greasy. A lot of names in there that a lot of people will recognize. It's been a great communal event for people to be a part of. And we saw last week during the rosters that were announced for that, uh, they do a live captain's draft, which means they have multiple captains that just pick based on uh, placement on who they want to join their team. It just goes down the line. They pick first, second, third, and then go reverse order. And you can see some of the teams that were there. Sathew with AJ and Dapper. They placed top four, but the story of the day was the team that came in first. A lot of people probably expected this, especially with this roster. Cronovi, Arsenal, and Atomic did it quite well for themselves. 3-0, 3-2. Sathew's team really only giving them most trouble. And then 4-1 against Wiz team. So great results there across the board. But that's pretty much the majority of what we have here for the show. I am going to quickly talk about some other news that's been going on in the community. We did see Crates recently announced to be going away from for the foreseeable future. Uh, most likely a part of the acquisition by Epic. So that's uh, really great to see the initiatives that they're pulling out. It's been a lot of controversy about it because some people have not been liking that they're getting rid of it because they quite enjoy opening cr crates. They have a, a sense of pride and accomplishment whenever they get a black market decal, but uh, hopefully this will help ease things along for Rocket League, especially since the uh, laws that have recently been passed in other European countries banning crates and I believe sometimes even the games from being uh, featured on these stores. So Great to see that. Also, the one-year, or not one-year, three-year anniversary. Man, that would have been insane if it was one year of the victory by I Buy Power against Flipside. Got to see the uh, GIF tweeted by the Rocket League account, which is great from them. And also, we saw some feature articles by Ian. He's been doing a great job talking about uh, the recent season, the first one we saw from the South American scene. Hopefully, going to be getting more announcements soon. Everyone currently waiting to see what is going to be happening for the Season 8 announcement. Are they going to change anything now that Epic has acquired Psyonix? Is it going to be the same old story? Are we going to have more teams? Is it going to be a different format? No one really knows quite yet until it comes out, other than the people that actually work for Psyonix. So we got to kind of wait and see what happens there. But a little bit of a short show. Appreciate you all for coming out. Definitely recommend, if you missed it, checking out the VOD that we'll be having up on our YouTube channel. It will be youtube.com slash UGC. And eventually we'll also have these episodes on Spotify, which will be great for you to enjoy listening to in your car. So you don't really have to worry about showing up this late if you are a part of the European region. Also, want to give a big thanks to everyone for tuning in today and getting the RL Esports update, the off-season specials, and the community contributions. If you see anything in the community that we are not covering, make sure to let me know, and I will cover it next week. But thank you all for joining us here at Boost Pickup, and we will see you next week at the same time as per usual, and hope you have all enjoyed, and have a good night.